Affairs Committee 2012 to 16. He also served as foreign policy advisor to the Prime Minister of Georgia. He is at the moment, he is the Vice Chairman for International Relations at Anaclia Development Consortium. He worked in numerous public or civil service positions. He started as the first deputy chair of the UNESCO Affairs Council at MFA of Georgia in 1989, served as first deputy foreign minister, foreign policy advisor to the president, as well as ambassador of Georgia to USA, Canada, and Mexico. Also as secretary of National Security Council. Uh, he was member of the Georgian Dream Party, but also before that he was foreign minister of Georgia after leaving the foreign office. Uh, he, uh, I mean, uh, he was also Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson public policy scholar in Washington, as well as uh, president of the Energy Security Center at ADA University, or back then it was still Diplomatic Academy of Azerbaijan, and also secretary general to the Black Sea Economic Cooperation in Istanbul. So we have a very, as you could hear from the bio, you, we have a very experienced today. So we are very lucky. So thank you for accepting our invitation. Just to briefly introduce the moderator, Dr. Siddharth Saxena. We all know him. He's the director of the Cambridge Central Asia Forum, principal research associate in the Cavendish Laboratory of the University of Cambridge and affiliate lecturer of the Center of Development Studies. And equally, he is the co-investigator of the GCRF Compass project, which some of you probably uh, know or are part of actually today. So let me pass the floor to, to Montu. Thank you very much and enjoy, your, enjoy the event today. Thank you, Jakub. Uh, I won't uh, take much time uh, because we have a fantastic speaker ahead and, and we hope to engage. All I wanted to simply add is that this is a early career um, researcher led uh, project of trying to see how uh, the, the geography of Caucasus, um, which has you know, a fantastic uh, history uh, can reconnect under modern circumstances. And, and what are the prospects here? Uh, we are looking at uh, uh, with the help of our speakers, um, uh, the, the different aspects of economic, political, civil society and so on. So, uh, these talks are organized along those lines and we are really uh, you know honored and and lucky to have uh, the speaker uh, of the variety that we are getting and and please do uh, feel free to ask your questions i'd like to actually ask if uh, um our uh, the pi for the compass project uh, professor karsleva who is here perhaps she would like to uh, say a word of welcome <laughs> uh, Hello, hello everyone. An absolute pleasure and privilege to be with you here today and especially with such an honorable guest that we have here today. Um, indeed, within the COMPASS project, uh, we run uh, uh, one of the principal activities is actually focusing on research integration uh, with the wider region. And of course, the Caucasus are one of our uh, prime, um, uh, prime focus. And um, we currently work with Azerbaijan Diplomatic Academy as our direct partner, but of course the idea is that we want to uh, um, uh, expand it and include many, uh, uh, include our um, uh, partners from other Caucasian countries. And in that sense, we're making inroads and clearly one of them is uh, here now. And um, we also work with uh, Armenia, or at least we're trying to kind of establish these uh, solid connections on the ground. Um, so the idea is that whatever research we do, especially with regional focus, we want to bring it back to the UK, connect it all together, and also connect it with the policy world and communities. Uh, so that, well, there is a word we use, triangulate, so that all these dots are connected in terms of making all of us better informed. And of course, our partnerships um, uh, kind of to help us um, to, 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 to develop uh, uh, both research and informed policy decisions further. So I'm absolutely delighted that we have this opportunity and thank you very much for joining us today. And I hope this is only the very beginning of a very fruitful cooperation in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lena. So, uh... 
over to you. Uh, uh, we eagerly wait to hear your views. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. I'm really very much in you know, a delight to be with you uh, at Cambridge. And I found just in the morning uh, that it would be for the first time I would talk at Cambridge because due to some, I call it, you know, mystic fate or providence or whatever, uh, it appeared so that throughout my quite long professional career and different capacities, uh, I visited, you know, the UK many times, especially in you know, London. And whenever I had invitation to talk uh, at uh, different schools and universities, it always appeared to be Oxford. So thank you for inviting me to Cambridge at last. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. I've seen you know, my good and old time in you know, France. And I indeed, you know, there's no doubt for me that I would enjoy this. I wouldn't call it you know, a lecture, but let's call it a you know, conversation about, uh, about Georgian nature, as far as I'm Georgian sitting here in Tbilisi, but also naturally we will we'll talk about the South Caucasus and area beyond it, because to understand the realities, uh, what's going on in Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, uh, not only geography, no matters, I mean, you know, not geography of Georgia, where Georgia is located or Georgia's history, or Armenia or Azerbaijan, but I, I call it, you know, context, context of this, you know, countries and context what's going on beyond this region, which impacts, you know, the region and not only this region, but uh, I would say uh, European, you know, security and stability as well. Uh, so I think we'll talk about that in this kind of, you know, format. It will be not only conversation about Georgia and the South Caucasus, but we will try to go beyond, you know, this area and uh, talk at least, you know, uh, stenographically, uh, because I understand that uh, 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 I need to compress, you know, my, my, my comments into some 30, 40 minutes, uh, and then we'll, we'll be engaged into the question and answer, you know, session, and uh, we, can, we can add to our discussion other you know stuff again i know that you know georgia is quite well known though it's first time as i admitted uh, my my first time uh, meeting uh, being you know at cambridge I, we can say you know that way it's you not know, virtually i know that georgia is quite well known uh, to your you know university uh, through the annual cambridge series you held you know from 2013 uh, through 2018 under the auspices of British Georgian Society in collaboration with either, if I remember it correctly, Clare College or Pembroke College. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as I remember, besides informing and advertising, you know, uh, the Cambridge audience and network about Georgia, uh, this event has some special you know, uh, agenda uh, to establish uh, at Cambridge the chair of Georgian you know, studies. Uh, it still uh, has not happened as far as I know. And who knows, maybe my humble chat today will prompt somehow a new those efforts because I think uh, this would be interesting and important not only for Georgia and the South Caucasus region, but also, also from, from Cambridge, which is obvious, but also from the experts uh, from, from uh, Europe and Euro-Atlantic you know, community. Uh, uh, let me start uh, with my own country, uh, Georgia, and especially as far as we made you know, global news these couple of days. Uh, and indeed, and Leila knows it quite well, 
Uh, Georgia, to an outsider, looks like a country which permanently is going through perpetual crunch time. A country where something always, you know, happens, good or bad, a bit vibrant, however, never boring. It's, uh, that's obvious. And some, some friends of mine, you know, even call Georgia, teasingly, of course, you know, Peter Pan's of the Caucasus. Still immature, juvenile, kind of a kid in a candy, candy, candy store. Uh, I would not agree with this assessment uh, fully, though I, I would agree you know, with uh, certain elements of this in assessment. Uh, uh, with undeniable you know, vibrancy, we still, Georgians and Georgia still have been you know, steadily and resiliently moving ahead, maybe sometimes quite clumsily and awkwardly making unnecessary you know, mistakes, blunders, zigzags here and there, but still fully committed to our Western trajectory and agenda. And uh, this dedication does not depend on any regime change or change of the government. The commitment, as far as I understand, you know, is deeply rooted entrenched in the mindsets of the citizens of Georgia. Georgia is you know, quite vibrant and active, civil dynamic, civil society and the NGO community. And maybe we do it, you know, this uh, dedication a bit you know, naively and hastily. And uh, as far as I'm talking about Georgia, I need uh, to admit that democracy building usually takes time and the process itself in general looks in you know, ugly and messy everywhere. And uh, the recent standoff clash in Tbilisi between the authorities and the opposition, uh, opposition proves enough you know, that. And no, no doubt, uh, for me, that arrest of the chairman of the opposition or no party is just, you know, horrible, no doubts about that. But on the other hand, we have been, you know, counseled throughout those years by our, you know, friends and advisors that nobody is above the law, the principles of the rule of law. And so uh, I, I would use you know, this opportunity to pose a question. So what is the balance when we build a you know, democracy, but at the same time, we should take care of you know, interests of the state, not to damage you know, them, but how to navigate through these very delicate, you know, just, I would say, you know, metrics uh, uh, and not to damage, you know, principles and habits of democracy, but at the same time, not to you know, damage the interests of the state. Uh, I understand that, again, nobody, nobody should not be above the law, but this, that law of obedience or compliance, if this damage, you know, the interests of the country and the state, how we need to deal, you know, uh, resolve you know, this dilemma. I think it would be uh, interesting for me also to hear your, your um, opinion about that. Uh, uh, speaking about democracy in Georgia, including uh, the events you know, of, of the recent days, uh, I need to admit that uh, frequently the democratic experiment in Georgia, and by the way, assisted by our Western friends, looked like attempting to construct a pyramid from the top, which of course is, you know, engineering uh, nonsense, but not only, not only, and it appeared that it was also political nonsense. 
because it's not about, whenever we speak about, you know, democracy, it's not about constructing a house, but it more looks like a democratic tree once planted, must be nourished for years from its roots, not simply proclaimed as we frequently do Georgians, as having been, you know, completed when it suits, you know, those in power as a window dressing that makes a harsher reality and masks, you know, harsher reality. So uh, I can uh, stop uh, talking about democracy and um, this uh, event because I, 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 I'd like uh, I was eager to mention this you know, at the opening part of, of my of my conversation, and I would be delighted just to discuss the events of yesterday um, and of, re of the recent days, as well as you know perspectives of democratic you know, development and democratic process in Georgia. Of course, you know uh, uh, I can build upon a big basic. Uh, images of Georgia as something beautiful and desirable. And we talked about that, you know, before uh, my, my lecture, you know, started a country in the Southern Caucasus mountains where Europe and Asia um, meets, uh, meet each other, uh, uh, a country with an Eastern Black Sea coast, ancient vineyards and rich culture and literature, with its own language and alphabet. A tiny country, I would say, uh, an ancient country, and just 32 years, you know, young, newly independent democratic, you know, state. I think that's very important, you know, fact on the ground we need to, you know, just you know, keep in our mind. A country that used to be an you know, essential component and crisscross of different empires, Persian, Ottoman, Byzantine, Russian, a country which is very close by in the Middle Eastern equation. And for example, it takes just one hour, 30 minutes to reach, you know, Kirkuk, you know, Damascus, Aleppo, and anything bad or good you know, happens, you know, in this part beyond you know, Georgia or beyond the broader you know, region, it you know, instantly impacts you know, developments in different parts of the South Caucasus. Uh, uh, and uh, that's very obvious, like in chaos you know, theory, one butterfly flops you know, in Aleppo or Kirkuk or Baghdad. Uh, and uh, this you know, negative, if it is negative, this negative impact, you know, well, ricochets, you know, boomerangs uh, in Georgia, Azerbaijan, in Armenia, or just even farther. And I remember in this regard, you know, I, I was, you know, there myself uh, when uh, President Shevardnadze making his, you know, uh, remarks statement at the United Nations General Assembly, he just described Georgia as a country crucified on the geopolitical crest, and I would, I, I would, uh, agree with this, you know, metaphoric but very eloquent, you know, description of my country. There's one very important, you know, historical fact, and it's uh, 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 it's very important, especially because, you know, what. Wa while I'm speaking with you about, you know, Georgian perspectives, uh, um, and my, uh, no doubt for me that this fact is quite well known to you, but I, I'd like just to, you know, just to remind you about, about that, that uh, Georgia is uh, Europe's, you know, first nationwide experiment of dem democratic, you know, socialism. The constitution adopted on February 21st of 1921, exactly you know, 100 years ago, established no parliamentary sovereignty, local self-governance, abolished you know, the death penalty, provided for freedom of speech, belief, universal privileges you know, for men and women, and introduced jury trials and habeas corpus guarantees, 
And I remember, you know, the words of, you know, uh, Hans Dieter Genscher, foreign minister of Germany, uh, who said at that time in 1921, Georgian constitution already advocated such values as liberty, democracy, and the rule of law on which the modern Europe is based on, based on you know, currently. And we celebrated a couple of days ago that 100 uh, year anniversary of the first you know, uh, Democratic Republic of Georgia. Uh, but uh, as you know, in a couple of days in 1921, the celebration was you know, followed up with uh, a you know, tragic development. The first independent republic of Georgia came to the abrupt end after the Red Army and Bolsheviks uh, invaded it, occupied it, and they occupied it you know, for 70 years. And we'll celebrate, if I may use you know, that word, but we'll have a you know, memoriam service, memoriam events uh, regarding this you know, saddest you know, event in the history of Georgia. And uh, again, I, I'd like also to uh, admit and mention that Georgia is building its own democracy and, and it's been building uh, by this, by the citizens of Georgia. And uh, uh, indeed it's not perfect in a process at best. However, we should always, uh, uh, should use in you know, our good advice and counsel uh, and uh, on the other hand when i am critical about georgian democracy which is process and it never ends as any democracy in the world the permanent process of perfection uh, uh, and i always say that we are not perfect we are not ideal but then i follow up always with a question but who is perfect in this world uh, so, but it's not an excuse for Georgia to, to make, you know, these escapades and different, you know, mistakes and blunders. Another point I'd like to, you know, uh, leave with you, and uh, it may sound to you a bit, you know, I uh, say, uh, I do not know whether it's, you know, proper English, a bit polemical or polemic uh, Georgia, I think that Georgia as well as Azerbaijan and Armenia in a relative nature uh, matter, uh, Georgia is no more a post-Soviet country. Again, you know, Georgia is not, you know, perfect, but Georgia of uh, nowadays, it's not, you know, post-Soviet country. Georgia as well as Azerbaijan, as well as Armenia, Georgia has a clear vision of where it comes from. We remember that, where we are and where we want to go. Uh, as I uh, talked, you know, before we began uh, the, our conversation, there are different uh, fundamentals. I briefly talked about them when one speaks about, you know, Georgia, but uh, Georgia as a context is a great deal more. I'm sure the same thing about Armenia and Azerbaijan. So the complex and contextual assessment of uh, the region, and of specific you know, countries, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia, are very important to understand not only the realities on the ground, but also the perspectives. And uh, in this regard, of course, we are not uh, only elements of geography, which neither Georgians nor Armenians nor Azerbaijani, unfortunately, can change and we're destined to stay where we are in our part of the world. But however, we need to live wisely 
with that reality and in this you know, neighborhood, but that does not, uh, wisdom to live in you know, all wisely does not mean that we should not look beyond that substance. Uh, because when we speak about perspectives, you know, it's a lot of interesting. The world is very dynamic, especially in the post COVID, you know, I would say, you know, world gives, uh, it's been you no know, shocking uh, development, but at the same time, it, it's given uh, countries like Georgia, uh, Armenia, and Azerbaijan certain new, new, just, you know, look at the, at the world uh, development. And so I think uh, we need to use, you know, this opportunity. Georgia uh, today still lies as the, at the intersection of virtually of all strategic and vital interests in Eurasia and beyond it. And different strategic uh, vectors shooting Georgia crisscross, intersect with each other. Uh, uh, they create from time to time, you know, interesting, you know, synergies, sometimes uh, some elements of strategy, but only sometimes and frequently disappearing without any trace. Uh, so when I say that, uh, my uh, follow up point would be that we can complain about that, but on the other hand, uh, for these, you know, strategies or synergies to stay uh, firmly in Georgia, Azerbaijan, or just, you know, in Armenia, we should make our own, you know, countries you know, stronger than we are. We should make, you know, Georgia a strong institutionalized, you know, democracy, country of the rule of law. And uh, it's not enough. Uh, in this uh, contemporary world, we should also be a useful partner uh, to our allies and friends. Uh, and uh, I doubt that, you know, the Western leaders would think about Georgia every day or uh, as they wake up, the first thing in the world, uh, uh, they would, you know, ask what's going in, in Georgia. But at the same time, we should be ready and build this, you know, window of opportunity whenever Georgia uh, would be you know, required Georgia's capacity, Georgia's you know, resources and potential, as well as uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan, we should be ready for, for these uh, opportunities. Uh, again, uh, it's about you know, kind of perspectives. Georgia, I'd like to remind you, and we talked also briefly about you know, Nigozi, Nikozi, and you know, these parts of uh, Georgia, which is on the front line, uh, demarcation line between Russia uh, uh, and Georgia. Georgia is a dismembered and occupied country. 20% of territory is occupied by Russia. Uh, it's uh, quite well known. The Second Karabakh War has changed also the political strategic landscape of the South Caucasus. And now, Russian, uh, I quote unquote, in the Russian peacekeepers, uh, literally the FSB units are on the territory of Azerbaijan to control a newly, newly opened Lachinino corridor. And uh, we Georgians, and not only Georgians, uh, the, the post Soviet space, Georgians, Ukrainians, Moldovans. They know we know, we know uh, what Russian peacekeepers, you know, peacekeeping, you know, means. And in this regard, I'd like to reflect, recall uh, a wonderful expression, and Leila may remember, you know, that of our good friend Paul Gobel, brilliant expert, who just said that Russian peacekeeping, peacekeeping is, you know, uh, keeping one piece of land here and there, uh, and uh, that's it. So, so there are some new realities on the ground. Georgia always remain you know, ambitious about its regional ties. And there is an uh, inescapable, and that's uh, inescapable, 
reality. And South Caucasus, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia, uh, you know, these uh, three states you know, with a divergent in a strategic agenda, but at the same time, we are tied to each other, perhaps even more than we would care to admit. Georgia would not be what I'd like to say. I'd like to explain that uh, when I say that we are just very much you know, tied up, Georgia wouldn't be, it's my personal opinion, Georgia would not be fully safe and secure if something wrong is going in Armenia or Azerbaijan or between them. Our two regional partners would not be safe and secure if something were to happen to Russia and say uh, us Georgians. So our security and stability as well as our independence and sovereignty are interconnected, intertwined and interdependent. In sum, none of us operates in a strategic you know, vacuum, nor we can afford to do so. We are different. Uh, we, as I admitted, have different strategic you know, priorities, different agendas and political systems, but in many respects, we float on the same boat. Azerbaijan is our strategic ally through many, many, you know, just no links and uh, commercial trade, political uh, formats, but mainly through the Caspian Sea Energy Transportation Projects. And we've enabled Caspian oil and gas resources to reach Europe, you know, through transiting, you know, uh, these assets you now through Georgia. Uh, uh, and uh, we indeed, you know, care uh, about this, you know, strategic friendship and strategic alliance between our two two countries. Uh, Armenia is our our you know neighbor with centuries long you know ties, cultural links, uh, uh, religion, and so on and so forth. They have their own, you know, political, you know, agenda. They have, you know, their, you know, own, you know, political vectors. They they believe into that, uh, and we appreciate that. We we just acknowledge, you know, that, uh, uh, and uh, that's also an effect on the ground. We are both uh, uh, Armenians and Azerbaijan's window to the Western world. When it, when it comes to shipping and ports, and uh, we would be delighted to keep with this you know, opportunity. Uh, uh, there are certain you know, problems in this regard, but still this you know, potential of Georgia belongs not only to Georgia, but also to our you know, neighbors. Uh, we, as you know, we are associated you know, uh, signed the association agreement with the European Union, especially its economic you know, element, the CFTA. It's very important, naturally, for for Georgia. But uh, as as we say, uh, this you know, the CFTA agreement uh, should be open to our immediate neighbors, uh, to Armenians, to Azerbaijan, uh, whenever they find it appropriate to use you know this capacity. And in this regard, speaking about the region, and I, as far as I mentioned this CFTA, I'd like to recall one, uh, one episode. Uh, in my experience, uh, I was, you know, a couple of years ago in Tehran uh, with the delegation of Georgian MPs, with the chairman of Georgian parliament by the time, and in the meeting with uh, the chairman of Ir Ir uh, Iranian parliament, uh, Mr. Larijani, Chairman uh, Larry Jani, very experienced, very sophisticated you know, politician. When he greeted us, uh, 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 he said, you know, before we continue our conversation about perspectives of relationship between Georgia and Iran, I'd like to congratulate, congratulate uh, Georgia uh, um, signing this, this CFTA agreement and uh, uh, looks like our we had certain you know kind of 
a question mark, if I may say that way, on our face. He smiled and he said, you know, you think that we Iranians do not watch developments in the region? And we read, you know, the CFTA agreement, and this agreement is about more than, you know, thousand pages. And he said, you know, there is item, uh, I, I remember that there is, you know, item 52nd in this, you know, huge agreement, which says that the CFTA agreement is not agreement between EU and Georgia, but it uh, lets, you know, the third party to participate in this agreement. So I'd like, uh, is, I think that it's very important, you know, just, you know, uh, for, for our European and Euro-Atlantic, you know, friends to remember that uh, one can have, you know, certain problems with Iran's, you know, policy or just Iranian leadership or whatever, but Iran, and I'll talk about that uh, a bit later, Iran is part of our, our original you know, life. And uh, oh, it's a centuries long, you know, with na na neighbors with a lot of you know, intersected, uh, intersecting, you know, interests. So, uh, and uh, Iranians are quite, quite uh, carefully watching developments uh, in the South Caucasus. So, our region, South Caucasus, has significant role to play in the global economy. And for that to happen, I think we need to facilitate the establishment of Georgia uh, as a multimodal corridor, energy shipping, rail, road, fiber optic. And I hope, you know, my good friend, uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, Especially they, they friends in Azerbaijan, they know about that, and they are we are jointly, you know, thinking and working on these issues. Uh, and uh, this multimodal, you know, format of Georgia again open to our, for our neighbors uh, uh, would put the brakes on Russian influence and better, better respond to China's Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, and uh, this joint efforts to diversify regional capacity, I mean, Azerbaijan, uh, uh, Georgia, I hope, you know, in, in in future, it well, this you know, capacity would be open also for Azerbaijan. Uh, it would be interesting not only for our countries but also you know for the Euro-Atlantic you know community. For example, why not to use uh, why not to use? Uh, 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 I hope you heard about this very interesting um, USAID's you know project Blue Dot Network, which is about inviting initiative to bring, you know, uh, together governments and the private sector, uh, civil society to promote infrastructure development. It would be very interesting step if the South Caucasus would be kind of experimental, you know, small path to, to, to implement, you know, this very interesting project. I do not say that we should, you know, say, and kick China out or just uh, other uh, uh, countries. But again, again, you know, I think to balance uh, different commercial trade, which comes to uh, strategic interests, it would be very important. And I would appreciate if uh, you uh, pay attention to very interesting, you know, project um, established by EU and Japan, so-called EU-Japan connectivity you know, format, which is very diverse, which is big, you know, this huge, you know, two economies. But also, if you read these documents, and just recently, uh, I, I was notified, uh, informed that uh, there is certain uh, segments in this, you know, huge uh, document 
about South Caucasus and how to use you know, this potential and capacity resources, ports on the Eastern shores of the Black Sea, not just in this regard. And uh, while I'm speaking about the Eastern shores of the Black Sea, uh, I think you, you heard about and know much about a deep sea port of Anaclia, uh, which is uh, due to uh, some reasons uh, been stopped and which could have been the only deep sea port on the eastern shores of the Black Sea. Uh, and uh, in this regard, and the capacity and resources of the Georgia's uh, coastal you know, uh, element is very, very important. And Georgia in this regard looks like to be the last uh, gateway to Europe uh, uh, and uh, oh, this strategic you know, capacity is uh, so evident and uh, to anyone if uh, this uh, person uh, has, um, has a map in his you know, hands. And Georgia, when I say Georgia, I'd like also you to know that it's, I just speak about Georgia context. So I, I say Georgia's capacity, which in my opinion should be used properly by, uh, by Azerbaijan and be open and also to Armenia. Uh, Georgia is the most direct route from uh, China to Europe that, that does not go uh, run you know, through Russia. And as I said, it's literally the last gateway um, on the on the eastern shores of the Black Sea towards Europe, the EU space. And uh, when I um, mentioned Anaclia, Anaclia could have had you know direct access to Constanta, a deep sea port of Romania, a country which is you know NATO and the EU member. So that's again you know about you know perspectives. So we live uh, uh, in a transforming you know, neighborhood and uh, maintain good relations. We try with just about everyone. All around us, other states are going through their own you know, transition, transformation, some better uh, than others, which is why security was such an important part uh, is a very important part of our our conversation, and that's why why I speak much about that. So let me go uh, briefly to to our neighborhood. You know, Turkey, a NATO member, yeah, yeah. is Georgia's you know strategic you know partner, a factor I would say of stability for Georgia. It's key commercial and trade partner, and uh, from uh, this, you know, perspective is better. The relations are between Turkey and Europe, the United States of America. It's good for Georgia's security and stability as well. I talked a bit about Iran. Iran is emerging uh, as a potential game-changing Eurasian actor. And we need to keep this in our mind within a strong centuries long interest in the Caucasus and beyond it. And as I said, you know, one likes Iran or not, it's a strong regional you know, actor. And by the way, recognizing Georgia's territorial integrity and the country that not only once helped Georgia during energy crisis, uh, in the early you know, 90s, you remember when Russians you know, just blocked energy supply, it was Iran which you know, just helped Georgia in this regard. And uh, we should not forget that uh, these regional big powers, Russia, Turkey, Iran, they have you know, their own you know, strategic agenda as well as, you know, as we say, you know, uh, quite long, you know, memory. 
I talked about Armenia, I talked about Azerbaijan, and uh, do not worry, please, I do not forget one big you know, neighbor, uh, which is impossible to forget, or if one forgets, Russia, Russia would remind you about her presence. It's also very much you know, obvious. Uh, before I uh, start talking briefly about Russia, I'd like just to um, admit one very important, you know, geographic fact. Uh, as far as you know, Russian-Georgian relations is very quite vibrant, sensitive, you know, issue for not only for Russia and Georgia, but the entire European and Euro-Atlantic you know, security. But it's very interesting fact that. Uh, as far uh, as you know, we do not have uh, diplomatic relations, you know, with Russia after the war, uh, 2008. We do not have relations, uh, but um, uh, we do not have also direct border, you know, with uh, uh, Russia. Russia, when we speak about Russian Federation, Georgia border is directly with the turbulent northern North Caucasus. Russia's, you know, Muslim enclaves, Chechnya, Ingushetia, Dagestan, Kabardo, there may be, you know, some others. And with some of these, you know, uh, elements I, I just mentioned, Georgia had quite troubled times throughout its, you know, history. And as you well know, this area is one of the principal feeders of, of jihadis uh, to conflicts throughout the Islamic world and terrorists you know, everywhere. So uh, it's very uh, important uh, element for us, uh, for all of us you know, to remember when we speak about Georgian you know, Russian relations and geography of, of this relation. Uh, I, I can, uh, as far as I'm at Cambridge, we can start to, uh, with a kind of a cliche, uh, which, you know, uh, Winston Churchill you know, used that uh, it's not easy to forecast any action of, of Russia and Russia is a riddle. Everybody knows, you know, that wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. So, uh, Uh, when we speak about, you know, Russia, at least you know, from the Georgian angle, I think uh, this, uh, and I called it, you know, cliche, but, you know, this uh, wise uh, definition of Russia by uh, Sir, you know, Sir Winston is uh, very important uh, for Georgia because uh, it speaks about, uh, it speaks that Russia, Russia, at least, you know, from, as I said, you know, from the Georgian perspectives, from the Georgian angle, has different geopolitical, you know, uh, metric, and Russia interprets absolutely different, uh, differently any existing notion, such as you know, stability. It's different Europeans, and including, you know, or by the way, Georgians, uh, you interpret, you know, security, stability economic cooperation, neighborhood. In a different way, and Russians have their own interpretation and definition of that. It's very important uh, uh, to know, and it's very important for us, uh, for us to, for Georgians, as well as Azerbaijan, Armenians, to remember, because Russia has its own, you know, agenda. we can be critical about Russia's, you know, foreign policy or, or but uh, uh, I had a lot of conversations with Russians throughout my you know, professional career. And uh, uh, I, I, I would say that, of course, we need to be critical. We should not just you know, object to any, any attempts of Russia to interfere. But on the other hand, and we uh, should be critical about uh, President Putin, but believe me, uh, and I'm speaking about the conversations I, I, I had with Russians, 
that it does not depend only on uh, Vladimir Putin. We know who Putin is. But if you one day have you know, Mr. Navalny as president of Russia, Russia would have the same kind of you know, foreign policy uh, and for kind of uh, political, political uh, interpretations you know, towards countries like you know, Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova. And I hope you heard uh, uh, Mr. Navalny's uh, comments in this regard, which were quite harsh, um, uh, speaking about Georgia, Azerbaijan, uh, Armenia, or Ukraine. So when, uh, Uh, so, um, um, speaking about Georgian Russian relations, and it's not only about Georgian Russian relations. Uh, from uh, my hello, perspective, can I interrupt you just a little bit to say yeah. that we have about sort of five, seven minutes? Yeah, yeah, possible. I'm just, you know, coming, I'm just coming to the end. I would say that a stable. Uh, and securing or Georgia would be essential element uh, in in the shaping of you know Russia's future, but uh, as well as you know strong Azerbaijan Ukraine or just I, I mean you know former Soviet uh, republics which uh, at the um, beginning I said that we are not we are not you know uh, Soviet or post. Soviet, you know, countries. We are normal Eastern, maybe European, you know, democracies. Again, not perfect, but that's what, you know, Russia does not understand uh, that, you know, strong neighborhood on the, on Russia's, you know, periphery would be essential for Russia's, you know, security and stable development. So they use, you know, this kind of, you know, negative, I call it, you know, negative conditionality, which is about either with us or against us. Uh, Russia does not have, you know, does not have uh, so-called, it was, you know, quite shallow, but still it was, you know, just uh, EU's good neighborhood, you know, just format. I remember I had conversation in Berlin during big, you know, round table, close to 80 or more participants. And when I talk jo about Georgia's aspiration towards NATO and EU, uh, a Russian uh, participant was very much you know, just over agitated. Uh, and I said to, to him um, publicly that why you are over agitated? Why Russia does not have uh, the same kind of uh, format as the European Union ha has, you know, this good neighbor neighborhood, you know, policy. And a Russian uh, participant, you know, very openly, uh, uh, answered uh, in the presence of this, you know, 90 uh, participants that Russia would never have in a good neighborhood, you know, policy. So that's the reality. Again, uh, uh, I can talk about Georgian Russian, you know, relations, but I'd like to end uh, with one kind of, you know, message that we understand uh, the importance of stable and cooperative Russia, uh, uh, but, uh, and I understand why the West and the United States and European Union or Europe and European other countries uh, need to have, you know, cooperative, stable, you know, uh, Russia due to different you know, reasons and to, due to different agendas, you know, you may have. In, in the West, but uh, I'd like to uh, leave this message with you that you would never have uh, this kind of cooperative Russia until Russia does not, you know, fix its relationship with its post-Soviet, uh, you know, neighborhood and does not recognize that we are independent. We are, you know, just sovereign countries and uh, keeping Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova, Kazakhstan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and uh, sovereign, it, it would be uh, good for Russia's you know, stability and security. So Georgia wants to live 
with Russia, but we do not live, want to live in Russia. I'd like to conclude you know, with this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, uh, for uh, laying out the, the complexity of the situation, uh, uh, also uh, your insight uh, in relationship with Iran. I think perhaps uh, are new to many of uh, the audience here. Uh, but uh, we open up now to the questions because um, uh, the, the queue is building up uh, from the interest. Uh, so, but before that, I would like to say that it will be interesting uh, for us to hear at uh, some point after Q&A, uh, your thoughts on what are the formats uh, which are stable for regional uh, um, stability, regional dialogue, meaning between the three countries uh, of Caucasus and how they collectively may respond to bigger questions, uh, uh, which be, be it Russia, be it Europe, be it BRI or Blue Dot Network. And, and, and that would be interesting if, the, if you have thoughts in that area. Uh, but right now, I would, I would like you to answer my question, but take questions from the floor. I would just say the cue uh, at the moment is because some people have raised hands and others have put it uh, to us directly. So uh, Hubertus, followed by uh, Neil, uh, followed by Chokan, uh, Reshim Singhji, and after that, uh, Elena. Elena, I'm sorry, you are second up there, but <laughs> the people jumped in before you. Yeah. And others. Okay, I think yeah. yeah thank, thanks very much and Tedo thank you very much for this broad and wide-ranging uh, view of Georgian policies and uh, its connections in the in the local but also in the wider neighborhood and you mentioned a couple of points which are uh, which I found striking because it's especially in connection with the very recent uh, developments which you referred to at the beginning uh, of course you, you talked about the Anaklia port project which is basically disrupted effectively disrupted uh, but then you also mentioned the Second Karabakh War and the shift in the security balance in the region. Now, in light of these developments, both relatively recent, uh, I was wondering what you make of uh, PM Garibashvili's recent rather unfriendly remarks about the Lithuanian Parliament uh, Foreign Affairs Chairman, um, which just did about uh, like two days ago. Um, which sort of raises the question, where does the current, not you, I mean, I know we're used then, but where does the current government, and in particular, it's puppet master Ivanishvili, actually stand in reality with regard to European and transatlantic integration? Because this is, of course, the, the, the big question that is being discussed in the expat circles in Tbilisi now. What, what does Georgia actually want at the moment? Is this just grandstanding? Or are they actually really moving back to the USSR, as some people have put in the Facebook uh, approach, uh, oh. profiles. Thank, uh, thank you very much. You know, it's uh, very interesting. You know, question. I, I tried to uh, answer. Uh, I had no idea that you were going to ask me that question, but I tried, you know, diplomatically to camouflage, you know, uh, my my answer. Again, uh, I, I, I admit it, and you know me, uh, and I lived in a long life in, in, in Georgian politics and uh, in Georgian diplomacy. You know, whatever we heard, you know, this rushness, uh, uh, you just mentioned uh, comments of uh, current prime minister regarding you know, Lithuania, uh, it's not, not appropriate. It's not appropriate. Uh, um, people, uh, um, uh, they may have uh, some critical opinions and critical assessments that uh, th there are different you know, formats, there are different channels of communication to express uh, that. Uh, I can understand the reason uh, for the irritation of Prime Minister Ali Bashvili, uh, because if you followed you know, exactly and, and language and words, you know, matter, you know, in this kind of, you know, discourse uh, that, and interpretations. Again, we, we complain about Russians, but we also have different uh, capacity to interpret, you know, things in a different way. Uh, uh, and that was the uh, reason, of course, you know, this Lithuanian MP, uh, uh, in his comments, he was a bit uh, too much, you know, pro, he was not, you know, neutral advisor or counsel. Uh, that's how I read, you know, the, his comments. Though I agree fully whatever he said, but he could have said that, you know, uh, a bit, you know, different uh, uh, in a diplomatic way as far as his 
not a private citizen coming from Vilnius or you know, Kaunas, but is the chairman of uh, Seimas of, 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 of the country, which is very friendly uh, uh, to Georgia, as well as our prime minister could have said it in a different, different way. Again, uh, going to uh, the second part of your just, you know, of your question, of course, this kind of, you know, remarks and reactions from the Georgian side makes people to, you know, to jerk because, hey, what's going on? Is Georgia, you know, saying no to its, you know, Western, Western, you know, vector and this and that? Uh, and in this regard, and I said this, you know, uh, in my uh, kind of, you know, kind of a bit, you know, chaotic, as I understand, you know, conversation, that this European, Euro-Atlantic, you know, vector, as I said, a bit maybe naively, uh, uh, but still is so deeply entrenched in the Georgian, uh, in the mindsets you know, of Georgians, uh, that it, it, will, it won't be you no know, easy for any, any prime minister or just you know, any member of uh, parliament, you know, just to change you know, this uh, vector. Uh, uh, and uh, as far as I understand, you know, uh, and if you follow the statements of prime minister, uh, next day, he was uh, absolutely you know, different. He, his you know, statement was you know, uh, indeed politically you know, correct, appropriate, and less you know, just aggressive. But uh, again, be, be absolutely confident about uh, Georgia's, uh, as I said, you know, dedication towards a you know, uh, Western uh, vector, uh, uh, Georgia's aspiration towards NATO, the European Union. And again, but in this regard, of course, you know, I, 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 I can, as, as I've been involved in this, you know, developments, you know, for, for more than uh, 30 years, our, you know, Western colleagues also should be, we need to be realistic Georgians, and we need to understand that NATO, the EU is a long-term project. But on the other hand, our Western friends, especially from NATO and the European Union, less, uh, we need to, they need to be also realistic and talk to us in an open way. Because when, when I used to go to Brussels meeting, you know, NATO military unit, and they said Georgia is more than capable to be a member of the uh, of NATO. And you and from this meeting, I used to go to the political segment of NATO. And uh, I heard this kind of, you know, yeah, we should be careful. Georgia needs to do, you know, this. Georgia needs to do that. Uh, and so we understand. We understand complexity of this process, but. Again, we need also to hear realistic, you know, just you know, uh, uh, statements from 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 colleagues and friends, NATO, the European Union. But again, you know, commitment of Georgia uh, towards you know its European and Euro-Atlantic um, uh, aspirations uh, uh, for me is uh, no doubt. It's uh, there is no way to, to change or just you know impact because uh, it, it would it would ricochet you know indeed very badly on those who, who try to to change that. I, I I'll jump into the conversation here before we move to Neil just to say uh, it uh, when we try to study the situation we ask some of the you know uh, differentiate between these aspirations uh, in, in broad terms meaning that when we look at EU's partnership with Georgia or other Caucasus country is one thing. It's about one can discuss development models. One can discuss um, uh, what you bring to the table and how Georgia can benefit from it. Uh, but when we talk about NATO, you're looking largely at a notional idea of security. Uh, uh, but our countries in Caucasus do the, uh, you know, what what payment holiday they will get in terms of their financial contributions to be part of the uh, NATO uh, and those kind of things we don't foreground in our discussion that yes, you can become one and how how will you pay for it? Your membership fee, what cost it comes with and are Georgian people ready to- There are certain nuances and details regarding when I always speak Georgia, NATO, Georgia, European mm -hmm. Union, uh, including whatever you just you know mentioned. 
But Georgia is very reliable. We speak about NATO. Georgia is a very reliable you know, partner uh, uh, for for NATO and Georgian soldiers and are they were in Iraq. They are now in Afghanistan. They are just you know, standing, you know, uh, next to our American, uh, uh, German, and European, you know, friends. No, no doubt, doubt about that. When we say about the European Union, it's more complex. It's more comprehensive. It's about it's about huge, you know, comprehensive, you know, agenda. It's about criteria. It's about standards. It's about about. Uh, a lot of you know things, and and in this regard, I always say, yeah, and uh, we need to take into account that it would be no long term, you know, project. But on the other hand, you know, engagement of Georgia with you know the European Union, implementation of those you know European Union standards, criteria, principles, and the practices. Is it's not also you know no less you know important for us because it makes Georgia better country better you know place for citizens of you know Georgia uh, and uh, again uh, speaking about NATO speaking about you know European Union or speaking about bilateral relations uh, with the United States or any European you know country including the UK uh, of course. We, we always care about these relations, but uh, on the other hand, sometimes we forget that it's about us. We should you know, work hard to implement this, you know, um, the principles uh, which are just in you know, place in, in these bilateral or uh, multilateral relations or institutional relations between the European Union. And Georgia, it's about, you know, Georgians, when you speak about democracy, you know, you, the West, uh, uh, Westerners, Western countries, Americans, you can only help us, but we need to help ourselves first of all. And yeah. it's about us um, uh, to make Georgia a fully, a full scope democratic. It takes, you know, time. It's not easy. That's very clear, indeed. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, and as I said, it's never ending, you know, process. <laughs> but, but, so, but it's, you know, yeah, but but again, it's about us. It, mm -hmm. You, you only can help us, you know, to 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 improve the quality. We will do this or do that. Advice, uh, and and so on and so on. So I'd like to bring Neil uh, in with a very practical question. <laughs> um, hello there. Um, thank you very much indeed for a very comprehensive discourse today. Um, my my question is um, obviously um, Georgia and Azerbaijan have been fraternal partners for a very long time. Um, will Georgia be participating in the reconstruction and rebuilding of the uh, territories that have been liberated from Armenian occupation? It's very very interesting, you know, by uh, very interesting you know, project. Uh, I'm not in the government. I do not know. I, I I do not know much about you know this, but uh, uh, it would be indeed very important and practical for Georgians who are quite experienced in different you know just you know implement implementing different you know regional you know projects. Uh, uh, if if asked by our friends from Azerbaijan from Baku to participate in this kind of you know. Um, uh, reconstruction and uh, uh, reconstruction, you know, of, of projects in, in these uh, liberated seven, you know, just you know, zones. Because uh, Georgian, uh, this commercial, economic, trade and economic ties uh, between Azerbaijan and Georgia are very close, very, uh, very strategic, and uh, I hope that. Well, the Georgian government and the Azerbaijani government uh, would, you know, coordinate uh, uh, these very interesting uh, efforts uh, just to help uh, Azerbaijan. If Azerbaijan wants any any assistance, you know, from Georgia, uh, to be to participate in this kind of. You know, Thank you. Thank you events. so much. Uh, uh, we like uh, um, Chokhan Dalmalin, who would like to ask a more interesting question from your CV. Uh, uh, Chokhan, would you like to ask a question? Oh, yes, yes, I'm here. Um, 
Uh, Dr. Japari, thanks, thank, thank you, thank you very much uh, for your so informative lecture, Didi Madloba, as you say in Georgia. Um, thank you, thank you. I was quite impressed by uh, reading from your bio that uh, being a, um, a relatively young man, you you get this uh, prestigious and difficult to get job at the Institute of uh, for the U.S. and Canada in Soviet Moscow. USA, Canada, yeah. Uh, nearly for a decade. And once um, we play education as central and academia in general, in central in uh, modern development here in Cambridge and concentrate on development study. I'm very curious what was your research you conducted there about and what was your PhD dissertation about? Thank you again. Thank you very much, you know. You learned my bio quite, quite, you know. Yeah, these were very interesting, you know, uh, years. It was in you know, a Soviet Soviet Union yet, and uh, it was very interesting um, how I made, you know, to become, you know, first uh, post uh, postgraduate, you know, student at the USA Canada you know, studies. It was Soviet Union and each uh, Soviet Republic had, if you remember, you do not remember, you look so young to me at least, you know. Uh, Soviet Republic had its own quota. For example, to go as a postgraduate student to the Moscow University to different, you know, uh, schools in different parts of the Soviet Union, and uh, there was one quota, uh, uh, as I remember, you know, uh, at the USA Canada Studies, and that's how I made made, you know, this very interesting very prestigious by the time, and by the time the only you know, think tank of studying in you know, U.S., uh, mainly U.S. Uh, uh, political you know, institutions, e economy, and so, and so on. And I made you know, this postgraduate class. And by the way, uh, my classmates were you know, Sergei Karaganov. It's very interesting now to know to know him because his you know statements his articles are quite vibrant and interesting my classmate was you know chingis uh, aitmatov san sanjar aitmatov and we we yeah we worked together it was you know kind of you know network and my phd dissertation was by the way as i was you know told the first one in the soviet union on the interrelations between uh, the executive uh, and legislative branch of the United States, relations between the White House and Congress, mechanisms, institutional, political, personal. Uh, and uh, I did that uh, as, I, as far as I know, you know, from others quite well and uh, that, that and Thank then you. after my postgraduate years and this dissertation, I stayed at the USA Canada Institute for 19 years. And I moved back. It's a different story. It's a story for my memoirs, maybe. I mo moved back to Georgia in 1989 after these you know, notorious uh, events that happened in, uh, in Georgia, Tbilisi in April 19. 89 when Soviet soldiers you know killed 22 uh, Georgians uh, and I made decision I had you know quite su successful you know career at the Institute but my wife my family I and my family made decision that it's time to go back to Georgia and that in 1989 of May May of 1989 I returned back to Georgia and since that I I'm I'm part of whatever you call, I call it Georgian lunacy, but uh, what can I do? Uh, uh, I, I would like to bring forward uh, uh, Professor Elena Krosteleva because she has to be at a different meeting. Uh, I would like her to ask a question. Uh, uh, please, Elena. Please. Thank you. And my apologies for slightly jumping, skipping the queue. Um, and also massive thanks uh, for your absolutely fascinating talk. I know how hard it is actually to address all this issue, especially democracy, uh, uh, given, given the current circumstances. But my question is as follows. Um, you know, uh, 
first thing, when I opened my uh, PC today, uh, I've noticed that, uh, that uh, many outlets, uh, media outlets, but EU Observer in particular, um, has stated this morning that Georgia is, uh, quote, Georgia is facing their beast and should call on the EU for help. I can see that other media outlets, for example, outlets, they also claim that Georgia should call also on the US help and uh, also on Russia in some occasions. Um, so basically, uh, uh, so, so many calls for help uh, uh, is coming from various directions, clearly denoting that geopolitics, hard geopolitics is back. And of course, while well understanding that this is, uh, um, hmm, this is important uh, counter in geopolitics, but it is clearly a separate issue. And my question here is what can and should Georgia do to avert the unfolding crisis herself? Because obviously Georgia's future is in Georgia's hands without Gee. actually having this helpful hand from the so-called greater powers. Thank you. I almost you know, talked about that in my first you know, answer. And I, I, you know, just uh, very humbly uh, grateful to you raising this issue, you know, one more time. Uh, I, I wrote close to, maybe I wouldn't exaggerate, close to a thousand, you know, messages to different friends from different countries because they were bombarding me with these messages. What's going on? What happened? Uh, uh, what is the way out? And uh, 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 my first line in my answers was, you know, I'm devastated right? because I didn't like what happened uh, within this, you know, two days in Georgia. Uh, but but I am devastated, uh, and but I try to be optimistic because uh, those who know, you know, it's one thing to watch, you know, Georgia from uh, London. Paris, Berlin, the United States of America, even for those people who, who are experts and who, who try to follow events in Georgia on a daily basis. There are so many nuances and details, you know, in, in this political life here in, in Georgia. That makes me, you know, optimistic. And my answer to you would be, which I already you know, maybe I would repeat, the same that it's about us Georgians. It's about you know how how well we communicate with each other, and uh, communicate in a very I would say uh, it's not about sitting and uh, sipping you know coffee and uh, you know, uh, saying some nice you know things. It should be you know very very solid, very vibrant you know communication dialogue uh, among politicians. Because it's not about them only; it's about Georgia. <clears throat> it's about you know Georgia uh, citizens of Georgia, and it's about <clears throat> it's about my grandson. And in what kind of country he is going to 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 live, and uh, grandsons and granddaughters of my friends and uh, oh, everybody here. So <clears throat> we should appreciate. <clears throat> I heard a lot of you know messages. <clears throat> From, from different you know, officials in the United States, you know, Jake Sullivan, National Security Advisor, to President Biden made you no know, comment, uh, different you know, members of uh, US Congress traditionally you know, made their comments, but, but we appreciate that. But anything including you know, democracy in Georgia should be built by Georgians you know, themselves because it's our country. Uh, uh, and but on the other hand, we would appreciate any assistance, any 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 advice, any counsel, you know, from from uh, uh, those you know people because they, they are friends of friends of Georgia. But there is one but, and I I said this you know many times to my friends in Washington D.C. and European capitals. But at the same time, yes, I do not like what happened you know two days ago in Georgia. They do not like because they support, you know, Georgia, and they are afraid that, you know, this vibrancy may be used by enemies of Georgia. But on the other hand, you know, our friends who try to advise and sometimes too much, they 
need to let us do our homework ourselves because it's about us and it's about <clears throat> as i said earlier it's about those you know, nuances and details everybody does not you know, know okay thank you thank you so thank much you. Uh, uh thank you elena uh uh Reshim Singhi, uh, you would like to ask a question Hello, Professor. I'm very, Doctor. I'm very impressed with your talk. Thank you. And uh, and uh, really very knowledgeable. And I have learned a lot from you. And because you have spent 19 years in uh, America and other part of that world, and that is your experience tells me while you are speaking. One thing is that you have spent first part of your lecture a uh, relationship with uh, uh, your neighbors, Armenia and... Uh... No, have we lost him? <laughs> Looks like he got cut off somehow. Never mind. Uh, uh, we, we will return if he comes back to us. Uh, uh, so uh, we would then uh, move to uh, uh, Tamara, uh, please. It's your turn. Oh, there we are. Baton um, Otezo, it's lovely to see you. I remember, it, can you hear me? Yeah, oh. we, can, we can hear you. Yeah. I yes, I hear you. I, I recognize you. I'm so. Yeah, how I are you? I you from 1989 when we, we I was yeah. in Georgia and it was pretty awful. Um, yeah, on at the end of October last in last October, we had our yeah. 32nd annual Georgian Studies Day, oh. and this year we um, uh, devoted it to COVID-19 and the experience in Georgia because at the time, the World Health Organization um, was praising Georgia. It was a star of COVID um, at the time because they had done so well. Um, New Zealand and Georgia were the, were the examples used. Uh, but what I'm coming to is that, is it possible that Georgia has tried to be too democratic because there was lockdown there was um, the case of not having demonstrations in the streets because of the transmission of COVID. And the actual result on the ground is that Georgia has totally lost its status as the star of COVID because there were huge numbers of cases, many deaths uh, as a result of so much mingling on the streets. And I sort of feel that poor Georgia it tried to be so democratic that it allowed all these demonstrations oh. in the street. And then, of course, then they go and res they arrest the rabble-rouser-in-chief. And then they get, they get battered for being non-democratic either. And it does seem, I mean, we can't give advice, but we just wish that, you know, sometimes democracy is, is normal. You know, people aren't supposed to be on the street during COVID lockdown. So you take them, you know, there's nothing undemocratic about it. And so I just wonder um, what, what can one do for, as you say, Georgia to feel okay that you can be democratic, but actually run a government and run oh. a policy. I'm sorry that I, I don't, I mean this as a sort of cri de coeur, oh, thank rather thank than you criticism. But thank you. you've got to do it sometime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, it's so nice to see you again. And, you know, just I remember, you know, these, you know, meetings in Tbilisi a long, long time ago. Again, I talked about that, you know, democracy, dilemma, uh, uh, habits of democracy, principles of democracy, nobody's above law, uh, all this, you know, and state, you know, interest and including when we have you know, this pandemic, but again, Georgia, that's why I called you know, our beloved you know, Georgia, Peter Pence of the Caucasus. 
no one mature, sometimes juvenile, as I said, you know, kids in the candy store. And we uh, frequently, and we are, as I said, you know, just 32 years young toddler democracy in this part of the world. We accomplish a lot of you know, things, but we still confuse, not only Russians confuse, but we also confuse a lot of you know, notions and we can confuse democracy with chaos. Democracy is a strong institutions, rule of law and discipline. Democracy does not allow you to go and do whatever you want to do and say, it's a democracy and I can, I can do this and I'm, a, I'm an angel, I'm a messiah and I can do whatever I want to do. And I think that's the problem. When, you know, government, as you said, and I fully agree, did indeed, you know, perfectly, you know, first period of the pandemic. And then, then uh, uh, lockdowns are not good. Nobody likes, you know, lockdowns. But, but uh, <laughs> dilemma is, you know, absolutely different. Either you die or you infect your just whoever, your family members and friends, or you need to follow. It's not nice. But, but when you, uh, Georgians love this, I don't know about uh, Brits and uh, citizens of the United Kingdom or Europeans, I think, you know, France, we are somehow similar with France. Uh, uh, when we try to politicize in you know, a pandemic and we use it as a weapon to criticize government and when government is weak, government tries to you know, somehow to maneuver uh, and uh, making you know, uh, re restrictions you know, milder and milder. So I absolutely, uh, you, I, I agree fully with you that uh, we should stay and do our best, you know, uh, democratic. Uh, we should not, you know, for example, arrest leaders of, of the opposition party, but on the other hand, democracy does not mean, you know, chaos or, or just uh, whatever. Democracy is not about, you know, so uh, it's about, I would say, weak institutions, uh, uh, too much, you know, free uh, Georgian mass media, which is just about just, you know, negative news. Uh, but I, I think, you know, I fully agree with you, but on the other hand, I would say, I would better live with this kind of de democratic, you know, chaos and try to, you know, not to be infected then just to bring back, you know, Soviet rules and Soviet discipline and fight that way, you know, pandemic. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing which always comes to my mind. A, a disease which simply can be defeated by water and soap uh, um, is somehow, because of human behavior, uh, it's become a topic of, you know, historical consequence. But uh, uh, ne ne never mind. Um, uh, so uh, I, if uh, uh, Mr. Ishim Singh had uh, like to finish his question, he got cut off. And then we will sort of uh, edge towards closing our session. We are slightly over time now already. But would you like to finish your question, Mr. Ishim Singh? Anji, uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, yes, I was mentioning to the doctor that uh, he has covered a lot in a his first uh, part of his lecture. He did mention about uh, amendment, amending the relationship with George uh, neighbors and uh, sorting out all the differences, which is territorial differences with Azerbaijan as well as Armenia. But at the end of the day, all that time is spent on that. Georgia should be looking beyond that too. I know that he has mentioned in second part his relationship with Iran and uh, Turkey, and then he went beyond to European Union and USA, and did mention a bit about Russia. And Russia very clearly, Georgia has, he, Professor, uh, he has mentioned about his, uh, he can live with Russia, not in Russia. That's quite a good, strong statement, which I like very much. But why can't he think beyond 
into the Middle East, specifically with India, as well as the Far East. And there is a lot of scope for Georgia to be expanding its territory, its, its wings beyond these little atmosphere of Europe, Europe as well as about uh, Russia and uh, neighbor, neighboring countries. Thank you. Then another thing which is missing out from these countries is their missions abroad. They are really clo closing their doors into themselves. They are not going out into the countries and meeting the people of various kind to spread this message. Another thing which I like to ask about equality in Georgia, whether there is a space for other religion to come and start their own worship places or there is going to be a backlash. Thank you. Thank you. So, very wide Thank ranging very question. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I just uh, thank you very much. Very interesting, you know, very comprehensive, very, I, I would say, you know, very strategic, you know, question. Uh, I like it, you know, very, very much. Uh, but uh, maybe I, I, it's my, my, uh, my mistake. Uh, I, I, I left this kind of impression after my conversation or our lecture that Georgia is, is very powerful, you know, capable. Well, country in this part of the world, and Georgia has to do this and to be more active in the uh, uh, in the Middle East uh, with Japan, uh, Russia, and Europe, and the United States of America. Uh, unfortunately, we are not, you know, uh, big power, uh, but but Georgia uh, can be uh, uh, wise uh, uh, and. Uh, Using you know strategically the experience this you know I would call uh, I would call this institutional and collective memory Georgia as a country accumulated for centuries with its you know big name I mentioned in a, at the beginning of my 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 conversation that. Georgia is an ancient country and it used to be part or intersection of different you know, influences and strategic you know, vectors of different empires, Ottoman, Persian, uh, Byzantine, Russian, and whoever I do not remember. I think you know, in this regard, the value of Georgia, and when I said that Georgia, besides being as much democratic as possible, Georgia should be also become a useful partner to its you know, allies, allies and friends and use this accumulated, as I said, knowledge, institutional uh, and collective memory knowledge and help, for example, if we speak about uh, uh, the West and Westerners and our friends in the West to help uh, our friends uh, in Europe and the United States of America to better understand, you know, the realities on the ground uh, in our neighborhood in the countries like Turkey, Iran. And I would say that we can, we can, not always, but we can uh, have some interesting ideas regarding how to deal, you know, with Russia as well. Because I'd like to be absolutely correct, correctly understood that uh, it, it is in Georgia's interest to have a you know, stable and secure Russia as our big neighbor. Russia is too big. And if Russia is unstable, if Russia, God forbid, you know, starts crumbling down, it, it would be indeed very bad, not only uh, for Russia itself, but, but for its immediate neighbors as well. So we have this uh, knowledge and wisdom of dealing with you know, our big you know, neighbors, uh, including those who are in the, in the Middle East. And uh, by the way, in Japan, I was in Japan you know, one year ago, and uh, uh, we have very interesting you know, perspectives to have very good practical, uh, and I would say strategic commercial trade relations you know, with, with uh, Japan and I talked about you know China. It's not easy. Uh, there is no way to ignore you know China, but we need to balance uh, these relations uh, uh, 
with other you know, strategic yep. interests. With, yeah. Uh, I think uh, the last part which I asked you about the tolerance of other religions and religion, other people yeah, who should, have their own worship places. Yeah, uh, regarding, you know, religious, you know, Georgia is, uh, if you uh, follow Georgian uh, developments and, you know, processes in Georgia, Georgia is historically was famous for its, you know, religious you know, tolerance. And we have, uh, you know, as you know, you know, Muslim, you know, population, we have, you know, Jewish, uh, we had, you know, more Jewish uh, population, but they emigrated, majority of them, <coughs> uh, to Israel, but uh, we have, you know, still quite solid, you know, Jewish community uh, here, we have, you know, Orthodox, we have Armenians, we have Azerbaijani, they are living in Georgia, by the way, what's interesting, and I, I don't know, maybe you would tell, uh, not all personally you, but also other participants that Azerbaijani, Azerbaijani population, huge community, close to 700,000, an Armenian community living in, in Georgia, they are peaceful. They never yeah. had you know, any clash, any war, any problems you know, with each other. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think we are run, run over time, so we would like to close uh, the event uh, now. And thank you for, for all the, the um, you know, responses uh, and engaging with our audience. Uh, I would like to hand uh, the, or back to Jakub for a closing comment. Uh, Jakub? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Saxena. And uh, I would also like to thank our today's speaker. Ambassador Tedo Yaparidze for his insights uh, and for sharing his experience in, uh, in, uh, in the region and more broadly. And uh, we will, of course, continue with more events and more speakers on the region. What we have been missing in these discussions is uh, Armenia's pr perspective, which is something that we will, we are hoping to bring in, a, in the next event. And, uh, uh, hopefully we will continue in our discussions and this initiative on, uh, on the caucuses. So thank you, big thank you to the, to the audience for their questions and comments, as well as a uh, big thank you to, to the today's speaker, Tedo Yaparice. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Just for a couple of words, you know, thank you Please. very much. It was Please. very interesting, you know, for me to listen to your questions. And I'd like to conclude, you know, just, and it's very important for Cambridge and your institute uh, to, to continue this kind of, you know, lectures and conversations. Because, you know, South Caucasus is indeed, you know, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, as I said, it's, we are different, but it, it's very interesting, you know, equation, very interesting equation. I remember Shevardnadze used to, you know, just teasingly, of course, telling, uh, his, you know, foreign counterparts saying that you need uh, to be more careful towards South Caucasus because many countries like Russia, Iran, Turkey, Middle East, and whatever, Europe, uh, these Caucasus have, uh, South Caucasus has very specific angle. And this country, to watch, you know, countries from this location, this will, would give you, you know, more knowledge and more, more, more understanding of the realities in these uh, bigger, you know, countries uh, in our neighborhood. Yes, uh, you're absolutely. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and that's why we, we hope to continue having this voice uh, heard more often, and and both uh, we hope when the time allows us to be in the region and or have the people from the region to be here in Cambridge as well, both ways. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye.